Hi, I'm Dana. Welcome to this week's video. I was at a baby expo recently and was blown away by all the stuff that you can buy when you're having a baby. It must be really overwhelming for new parents to be thinking, all, all of this stuff, what do I really need? What don't I need? I mean, it's a lot has changed in the last 15 years since I had my first. And so today I wanna give you, I'm not a huge believer in gadgets. I really don't think that there's anything magical that's gonna get your baby to sleep, no you know, motion crib, no fancy lavender spray. I just, I don't, I just don't believe it. I believe that sleep is a skill set and you need to learn independent sleep skills and once a baby's learned that, then they're going to become a really great sleeper. But there are three things that I call my magic three that I use, uh, I've used with my own children from basically the time they were toddlers all the way through even to today. So today I'm gonna share with you my favorite three things that you can pick up at the store and use um, starting today. And they're really inexpensive gadgets that will help you in your parenting journey. Are you ready? Number one is a timer. I love a timer. I use a timer for everything. It's a great way to keep things consistent. It's a great way to sort of take the blame off of you and put it on the timer. Uh, and it's a great way to basically get kids to respond as quickly as you would like them to. So I'll give you a couple of examples where I would use a timer. One, when my kids were little, especially my middle son, hated to get out of the bathtub, just always threw a fit every time. So I brought in the timer and I said, as soon as we hear the bell, it's time to get out. Now, the first few times, absolutely, he still kicked up a fuss. But as he began to become aware of the fact that every time that bell rings, she hauls me out of the tub, whether I like it or not, he came around to the idea that the bell meant I have to get out, no point in putting up a fuss, and he stopped. And he would say, bell, and he would climb out of the tub and we'd move on to the next phase. Another great place to use it is in the morning rush hour, right? When you're trying to get out the door, trying to get everybody ready, setting a timer and then giving a little reward incentive around that is a great way to kind of keep stress levels down. So if you say, listen, if we can all, you know, get our shoes on, get our coats, get our backpacks and be out the door ready to go by the time the bell rings, then, you know, we can all have uh, your favorite song in the car or, you know, a little, uh, little candy once you get in your car seat, so whatever the reward might be. And that's a great way to keep it positive and kind of keep everybody on track. So timers are also great for timeouts, <laughs> right? That makes sense. Uh, setting the timer for uh, a minute for every age your ch uh, year your child is, is again a great way to kind of keep timeouts consistent and let your child know that, okay, I have to sit here until the timer goes uh, and then I can um, proceed. So that's one. Number two is reward. I love to give rewards. It's a great way to kind of get the ball rolling in the right direction. I don't want to see it linger on too long. It's just basically setting the stage for the behavior. So again, if you've got that morning rush hour and you're having a hard time getting out the door, setting a little reward incentive for everybody is a great good way to motivate. You can also use it at your bedtime process. You can use it for your child staying in their bed all night. You can use it if your child's getting up too early in the morning. If you can stay in your bed until your clock turns seven or magic seven or till you see the light come up, then um, there can be a little reward in that as well. Now, you're not gonna be rewarding your child until the time they leave home. It's just for the first week or so until the behavior gets established and then you kind of just stop mentioning it. Your child kind of loses uh, interest in, in it because there's reward enough in the fact that, you know, you're happy, you're giving lots of verbal praise. They're finding it's much better to be organized in the morning than to feel stressed out about it. So that's another one. My third, little gadget is a clock. 
I love a clock. Uh, it's a great way to keep a toddler in their bed longer in the morning hours. Early morning wake-ups are a really common problem, especially with the toddler. Once he has the freedom to get out of his own bed, you might find you have a little visitor at five o'clock in the morning. That's not fun for everyone. So you can just go old school. It's what I did with all my kids. Just got a digital alarm clock, duct tape over those minute numbers so all my kids could see was the hour and then just start talking about magic seven. That means it's nighty night, that means it's morning. Please don't call or come for me until you see that magic seven. Now again, you have to make it the rule and you gotta be consistent with it or it's not going to work. But that's a great way to keep your children in bed till the appropriate hour. You can get fancy with it if you want. There's lots of things that have come on the market and over the years to kind of toddler clocks are called, grow clocks some of them are called. Just be really cautious so that they're not too bright. We know that uh, too much light in the night is uh, interfering our melatonin production and that could cause some wake-ups for your child. So make sure the light is very low or it has a setting that you can turn down. Nothing that glows blue. That is the the um, most uh, interfering uh, color on the spectrum as far as melatonin is concerned. So nothing blue. All right, just to recap. Timers, love them. Rewards, great. Clocks, do it. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great day and sleep well.